Okay, so we're told here that we have a circle and that the length of the chord AB is 24 centimeters and it's located 5 centimeters from the center. So here's our circle. And the chord, let's say, is over here. Right? It's not, it's not through the center because it has a distance from the center. And that chord, they call it AB. And we know that the chord is 24 centimeters long. And we also know that it is 5 centimeters from the center. So here, if I draw a line, this distance right here is 5. And they want us to find the length of the radius. Okay. So what I did when I, I saw this is, the first thing I want to do is extend two radii, right, from the center to points A and B. And then I see I have these two tri these triangles, right? Let's call this point up here O. So I have A, O, and this point down here, we'll call it M. So A, O, M forms this one triangle over here, right? And then we have another triangle, B, O, M here. And I was like, wow, we, you know, we could really analyze this quickly if we have uh, right angles right here, right? And then I was thinking, you know, how do we know if those are right angles or, or, or not? And I realized that um, you can always find a way to draw um, a radius that's perpendicular to your chord in your circle. And that, I think at first, I'm like, ah, that can't be true. You can't really do that. But if you think about the way we have a circle set up, and if you just draw some random chord in it, let's say this one right here. You know, a radius is a, a point, or a diameter even, excuse me, diameter or radius, is a line that we draw somewhere from the origin to any point on the circle. And there are infinite points around the circle. So we don't, we're not restricted to draw a radius that's like not perpendicular to your chord. You could, you could have infinite radii that are not perpendicular, but you can always draw one that goes through the chord at a right angle. There's always a way to do that. And there's always a point you could pick to connect the radius to that point that would hit the chord at a right angle. So if you're given a situation where you have a chord and you want to be able to use a right angle, well, just pick a radius that gives the right angle and you've got everything you need. So once this happens, you have this right angle here. An important theorem is that if you have a, um, a radius and it hits your chord at a right angle, then it bisects that chord. And it will always do this, right? If, it, if the right angle is there and the, the converse is true, if you split the chord or bisected the chord, you've got right angles. So what does that mean? The length of this leg here is 12, and this one is 12. Now you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse here, but we might recognize it's 13. It's the 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triplet. That just means that 5 is A, 12 is the leg B, and the hypotenuse is the is 13 is the hypotenuse C. And you can test it out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 5 and 12, so 5 squared is 25, right, plus 144, that would equal C squared, right? 25 plus 144 is 169, that equals C squared, so C has to equal the square root of 169. We're only interested in the positive length here, so that's 13. And that's your Pythagorean triplet. The other triplet to look at, um, and triplets are just um, the lengths of the legs and the hypotenuse that are whole numbers in right triangles is a 3, 4, 5. 5, 12, 13, and 3, 4, 5 come up all the time. Thanks.